Hi, this is Paul from Our Loop Coaching and OurLoopCoaching.com. I'm with you in this video to talk about how to deal with changing your band name or getting a new band name and having another band that exists have the exact same name. Now, this is inspired by the news that's hit lately, uh, right before I'm recording this, about the band Lady Antebellum who changed their name to Lady A and have caused an absolute PR disaster by doing so. And I want to walk through all the mistakes that they made and then I want to recommend a book for you at the end of this video. And if you really enjoy this topic and like this topic, uh, I'd love to uh, introduce it to you. It's out of print, so you'll have to do some digging, probably your local used bookstore if you've got one to find it, but it's a great book and it goes in some great details. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Put a comment down below, subscribe, hit the bell so you get alerts for putting videos out all the freaking time. And uh, if you like it and you comment, it's gonna help other people find the video. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, so let's dive in. Now, when you are looking to change your band name, there's a lot of really good reasons to do so. You may have uh, put out an album that uh, in retrospect you're embarrassed about and you need to start over with a whole new brand. You may have gotten involved in some sort of controversy and you want to try to uh, get that in, into as much of your past as possible and start over. You may have a, a band member disagreement. A lot of changeover has happened in the band. You might as well change the brand because you're trying something totally new. And also, you know, never be afraid of a fresh new start with a fresh new brand name, uh, band name because all the things that you learned by going through the process of creating a band and uh, uh, developing a fan base, all those things you've already learned, the uh, the building process for this new band name is going to be much quicker than last time. So don't be afraid of starting over. It's okay. Uh, but obviously, if you can do everything right and do it all right the first time, everything that you build on is going to be easier to keep on building on top of that. It's like building on a foundation that just gets higher and higher and higher. Of course, that is uh, the preference. But don't be scared. Uh, don't be scared of trying to change things up. What you want to avoid, however, is changing things over and over and over again, you lose fans every single time and you want to be growing that audience. Even if you're doing something that's like eclectic, right? So, you know, you feel the vibe that you're gonna do something that's this genre and then the next time around you more of that genre. And, and that can be something that your fans will appreciate about you. The fact that you're trying something new and surprising and all that stuff. And they will associate that with the one brand and that can be part of that brand, that band name. So, you know, just don't make the change too often. Uh, and also, so other advice about band name, it's never a bad day, a bad idea to use your own name unless you have a name that's already uh, somebody else to, uh, that's uh, super popular. If your name's John Smith, something like that, you may want to, I don't know, change the last name, use middle name, something like that, try to make it more interesting. But uh, uh, your name can never be a bad thing. Now, if you're going to go for another name, what you have to do is what Lady Antebellum did not do. You have to go on Spotify. You have to go on Apple Music. You have to go on SoundCloud and Bandcamp and just Google in general, just searching for that band name. You put uh, 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 quote marks around the name so you get the exact uh, spelling, the exact uh, uh, order of the words in that order. Those words always appear if it's multiple name, uh, word name. You want to do those searches on all of those platforms. Keep in, keep in mind, not everybody is on every single platform. Some people are almost solely dedicated to Bandcamp, for example. Others only upload to Spotify. Others love SoundCloud. You have to check all of them and make sure there's nobody else who does have the band name. Now, you are almost always going to find that somebody has the same name you want. This is, this is okay. So you've got a number of different things that you can do. Now, make sure that the artist is active. Now, if they're dormant, that's different from dead. When they are dormant, that means they're gonna rise again and they will have a, a claim to that name and that can be trouble for you. And there's really usually no way to tell whether a band is dormant or dead when you're looking at their, their uh, socials or you're looking at their, the, the music platforms. 
and you're or, or on Google and seeing their website and stuff like that and you see oh they haven't posted anything in three years something like that that's a dormant band it might be a dead band there's no way to tell the only way to do so is to reach out communicate say hey it's all good everybody is in this for the same reasons right we're just here for the love of music so it's okay to reach out to somebody and say hey we'd like to use the name that you guys already have can you tell us is that going to be okay is that going to be a problem if you see multiple artists who are using the same name eh, you might want to try to get creative and try a different way to uh, uh, find a different band name because that's just going to be trouble but if there's just one reaching out to them saying hello being really cool about it is a great way to get the ball started now there doesn't need to be money changing hands when they're a artist at the le at the level of lady antebellum because they're not lady a yet in my mind if you're an artist at the level of like lady antebellum the brand has a huge amount of financial value at that point they are going to have to spend money to change their name and to replace somebody else's career that just goes with the territory but when you're just an emerging artist you're a struggling artist you're you're just getting up and going it's there's no money that needs to change hands do not pay anybody for a name do not do it it's very easy to come up with something else that hasn't yet been laid claim to but if you can just have that conversation about like hey are you guys active not active do you have a problem with this can we get on the phone and talk and that's a huge part of it right get on zoom get on uh, Skype get on uh, messenger uh, or get on the phone and just talk to them you know and have a good conversation you're not committed to the, the name yet remember that you don't want to commit to the name until you know you actually can have it so having that conversation if you find out that they're cool and they're fine and they don't care and there's nobody else who owns there's no trade trademark there's no copyright on it that sort of stuff those are the questions that you're asking and they go no nope, don't care don't have it it's all right we barely did anything that sort of thing you're cool move on you got the name it's good to go record that the conversation happened I mean if you record the conversation that's even better but if you just record that it happened so that way you've got some sort of documentation if there's trouble later that's really good but this shouldn't be a problem and I'll tell you what if you are uh, famous and wealthy enough that somebody does come back and tries to pretend that that conversation didn't happen and now you got to pay them for it that's a good problem all right deal with good problems later on it was uh it could be a pain in the ass but you know what? it's a good problem congratulations on being successful enough where now it's a problem all right but most of the time it's not so don't make it a bigger problem than it's not you know what i mean so next thing i wanted to say about this is i mentioned copyrights and trademarks copyrights and trademarks are very important as soon as you have some money coming in for for your band name, your brand, look into trademarking, look into copywriting. There's plenty of videos here on YouTube on how to do it and how to do it right. But even better is you want to have a relationship with a music business attorney, an attorney who has some uh, experience in the music industry. This is a great time to introduce yourself and get that conversation started with somebody who is a, a licensed attorney who knows exactly what to do with a copyright or a trademark for a music artist and it won't cost you a ton it may cost you a couple hundred bucks a little bit more something like that but it's not a ton of money it'll save you money later you get the trademark the copyright and even better you start to develop a relationship inside the music industry and you'll be able to leverage that relationship in the future if you're able to turn that attorney on to what you're doing they know lots of people most of the time they know lots of people and they can help you network into the music industry and make the connections that you need need to make and this is a great way to make that introduction right uh, uh, and relatively inexpensive way to make this introduction so again reaching out communicating actually speaking not just emailing or messaging back but actually speaking with somebody who's got a name that you want is absolutely absolutely crucial but here's another thing about band names that I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time and I haven't really had a great opportunity so I'm going to slip it in now right there are so many ways in which the uh, uh, that rap has influenced every other genre one of the cool ways that rap uh, uh, has influenced everybody else and I think is still underutilized it's underrepresented in other genres is the way that rap artists will name themselves 
Use creative spellings, use numbers, use symbols, things like that in order to separate themselves from the rest of the community and try to set themselves up as, as a unique brand. I love this because it makes it so easy when you're Googling one of them for them to come up and usually there's not somebody who has a name just like theirs. It may be spelled sort of like it, but when you throw in the symbols and the misspellings or whatever you want to call it, the creativity that's in there, now it's unique. Now it's the first thing that shows up on Google. When you search a band name that you want to have, you want to make sure that there is nothing going on on page one of Google that's going to get in your way as your, uh, 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 your career starts to grow and people are hearing about you and are searching the web to find out more about you. If you find that you are giving yourself a name, uh, I'm just going to make up a name, right? Trees or trees. You do first page of Google, there it's chock full of uh, articles about trees that you will never ever be able to get uh, above uh, in the Google search. Now, if somebody's searching for a band called Trees, you're not going to show up to like page five, no matter how popular, uh, popular you get. Don't use that name. Now, use th uh, the number three instead of E's or, uh, uh, you know, change it up in some way. Trees uh, uh, with a second name to it, you know, like, uh, uh, oh, geez, you know, you don't want to have a city. You don't want to have a state because that's just trees in that city or state. But you know what I'm saying? Get creative with the band name. So that way you show up on page one sooner, right? You want it so that when someone Googles your band name, your Spotify uh, profile is one of those things that show up on page page one. So that's pretty uh, crucial, right? Uh, I mentioned earlier a book that I wanted to recommend. It's a, a, an amazing document, unfortunately out of print nowadays. You won't find it on Amazon, except uh, maybe used for a couple hundred bucks, but you might find it in your local uh, bookstore. It's called the story of the letter U and the number two. And it's from a band that uh, existed years ago called Negative Land. Negative Land had recorded an album and as a joke, what they did was they called the album U2, just like the band. And they put the name of the album really huge and they put their band name really small. And so people thought back in the day, this is pre-internet and all that, uh, people thought, oh my goodness, this is a, a, a new album by the band U2 called Negative Land. I gotta buy this up. And the band did it as a joke, but man, they got sued. They got absolutely reamed by the uh, record label for U2 and their management company and everybody else. Even when the band was like emailing, or I'm sorry, not emailing, but writing letters to uh, uh, Ed, The Edge and Bono and all those guys, like pretty much begging for mercy, it, they didn't get it. They were just pummeled. And so it's an amazing document of all the legal communications that went back and forth. And if you are interested in the idea of branding and you're interested in music history, uh, music business history, uh, you're interested in uh, just the power of a brand and the power of a band name, the story of the letter U and the numeral two is a great, great book worth checking out. Uh, and, and that's it. All right. So uh, uh, again, man, I feel for Lady A and I feel for what she's going through. I hope that she gets some life changing money out of this humongous mistake that uh, Lady Antebellum have done that has in it right now it's costed her huge amounts for her career. And because Lady Antebellum is a uh, a huge money-making enterprise and Lady A is a struggling artist just like you are probably a struggling artist who's been doing it for over 30 years. Oh, it breaks my heart to hear about this. She's completely innocent and so therefore I hope she gets life-changing money out of this so that way uh, and all the rest of us can learn the lesson and the lesson is do your research and do really cool communications before you make this sort of change or you uh, announce yourself with a band name. Do your homework first, no matter how big you are. Uh, all right, so this is Paul from Outer Loop Coaching and I'll see you in the next video.